Today is the 20th of March and we're inside our unheated greenhouse and you see how advanced all my maples are. These are almost in leaf. The shoujo's coming into leaf and this is Benichi Dori in leaf. But we are inside the greenhouse so the temperature is about maybe 4 to 5 degrees centigrade warmer than outside. This is another day shoujo. It's got a strange coppery color but once the leaves are open it'll be a bright red so why am i showing you these pictures look at that another day shoujo here i'm showing you these pictures because i'm going to work on the maples today and the maples i'm going to work on are in the open so they are about maybe two three weeks behind the ones which are in the greenhouse so i will take you out to the open area and show you what i'm about to do now these are maples that we've been growing in flower pots and they've been here for at least 10 to 15 years. They started off life growing in the field and as you know me, I'm always doing air layering and propagating lots and lots of air layering, like this one for instance. This apparently was only air layered last year. This is an ordinary mountain maple I think, let me see. And I think these have all rooted well. So these are air layering. So we do propagate a great deal. But the point of showing you what I'm about to do is that I feel sometimes I'm a bit too greedy and I'm forever propagating by air layering and the trees will never end up as bonsai. So what is the point of it? Now look at this one for instance. Look at that, it's got a lovely root base and the bonsai probably is here. I could easily air lay this and get another tree here. So how long do I wait? That is the big question, you know. Should I wait forever? These are the difficult decisions I have to make. So I could wait another year and get an air layering out of this. It would be quite a nice tree. Let me look at another one and see what I should do and to show you the sort of dilemma I'm faced with. This is another typical maple. We grow them in these flower pots so that we can transfer them into bonsai pots more readily. But you see how it has been breaking back and the bonsai is virtually there. Beautiful nibari and all that. And you can see the bonsai already forming here. So many possibilities. So what we would do is constantly keep pruning these back, pruning them back. So we have the makings of a very nice bonsai. I can either cut it here or use that. The roots here are quite interesting. So this is how this would be done. I'll probably just put it in a bonsai training pot and see what happens from here on. So I didn't have to do a lot in that one. There are some others which I have to do more work. Let's look at each one and see what needs to be done. Okay, let's, let's look at this one. These are all like uh, 45, 50 litre pots. So you can see what I did. We cut the top off and you see how the buds are breaking all over the place. So this could be quite an interesting tree. I don't know where this root is going. Probably don't need it. I'm going to pot it up. So if I wanted to make a bonsai, I would probably cut it off here. That means with a silky saw, we would cut it there and then let it progress. So this is what we would do with this one. I don't know how sharp my silky saws are.
The point I'm trying to make is that we have to take decisions at some point. I can't let these grow forever. Otherwise, I'll never see the end of the bonsai. So this is how the bonsai is going to develop, either using this as the leader or this as the leader. And then we will go the new laterals again. Uh, another one we can look at is this one here. Every tree is just interesting, every tree is different. Just look at this one. This is a rather strange one. I don't know whether this is a sucker or what, but that's a different tree there. I thought that's another maple there. <laughs> So what I'm trying to show you is the way I've created the new leader here. If you look at this tree, you see it's chopped there and you get the new leader forming like so. You see that's how the new leader forms. That is the new leader. And if I don't want it going too tall, I take that off, take that off. And hopefully it will now bush out there and you've got the start of a new taper there. Let's see what's happening to this one here. Don't know whether this is a separate plant or a sucker from the same tree. keep walking around. Wherever I turn, I can see the results of my work. Look at this one here. You see how we've created the new leader here? See, we chopped it there and the new shoot has been allowed to grow. So this is the new leader forming and these are the new branches. And because I don't need to keep letting it grow endlessly, I should really bite the bullet I will keep this just to pull the sap up and this is how we're going to start this bonsai, like that, like so, this way. So this is going to be the start of another bonsai like that. Let me go further on and see what else there is. starting to rain but no matter let's continue there's another tree here look at this one you can see where I cut it if you have a look here you see that's where I cut it and we formed a new leader there so this is growing up and then we should shorten some of these branches So this is how this tree is going to develop, like so. So you get the idea, it's constantly chopping. I don't need to turn too far. I can find trees almost anywhere I look. I will get you another one. All these are maples in different stages of being developed. Look at this lovely one here. And you see how See the distressing of the trunk gives it a natural shari there. Lot of lovely beautiful shari there. And you look at the twists and turns on this tree. Look at it. 
or interested. This one is probably spoiling the line, so I'll get this off. I'm just going to take the back one off because here the line of the composition is getting spoiled. So I'm going to take that off. Don't need that one. So you can see how that lovely shape is emerging. I can wire all these. So that's the start of another bonsai. So this is how we are producing all the maples. So continuing with my maple projects, the ones we grow in our field and then we dig them up in pots and grow them in pots, we fished out quite a few maples, so let me talk about some of them. Now I have two maples here and they are, no this is a mountain maple, this is a deshojo, you can see these lovely red tips. I wanted to show you this tree because you look at this fine root here, this comes from air layering. Many people don't realize that air layering has many advantages and one of the great advantages of air layering is that you get a lot of these fine roots all around the perimeter of the tree instead of thick roots like that that go straight into the ground. So this is from a seed or something so this has not been air lit it's just grown from a big uh, seedling and grown big like this. So when you grow from seed and grow them in the field, get thick roots, but if you grow from air laying, you get these fine radial roots. So this is going to be a very, very nice bonsai in time. So I brought this in, so all we're going to do is pot this up. You see, look at that lovely base. That's the new leader. I can arrange some of the branches, maybe this, probably cut that off. And this is going to be the progression of this tree. So there's not much to talk about with this tree. Now this tree, because the roots are so interesting, it could be a case for making an exposed root bonsai. Uh, someone here was just suggesting that we make a root over rock. But root over rock is usually done with small trees and with fine roots which are draped over the rock. Once the roots have become atrophied like this, thick, you can't do much with it. So all you can do is what we call a bit of cheating and insert rocks to make it appear as if it's growing on a rock. But they are a bit too old to grow proper root of rock. So that is the sort of halfway house or what we call cheating, you know, fake root over rock that you're trying to make. Uh, so root over rock is usually done with trees that are fine thin roots which are draped over, not thick roots like this. So a tree like that would be better used as an exposed root, that means planted in a pot with all the roots exposed. I think the Chinese are very particularly fond of this sort of style, exposed root style. They like the look of these weird and wonderful exotic looking roots. So there you are. This is going to be a nice little bonsai with branches like that, an exposed root. We'll pot them up in a pot and show you the final results. Now this particular tree, I show you because it's a customer's tree. This customer came on Saturday to show me this tree, but they wanted the roots exposed a little more. So all we'll do is tease the roots more to show some more roots. I'm talking about the exposed root because there are people who like roots. It may not be everyone's taste, but you have to respect people's taste. Just because you don't like it, it doesn't mean other people don't like it. And just because you don't like it, it doesn't mean that you are right. Other people can also be right. I found that as I've become older, I've learned to respect people's taste. I think it's very important to do that. If everything was the same, the world would be so boring. This is what you call the richness of diversity. So, because this dear customer wanted exposed roots, I'm going to expose some more root when I put it back in the pot so that the roots are more visible. So I will keep teasing away and all I will do is expose more, more root and show it up. So I will show the tree when it is 
finely done. As we say, it's not usually rocket science. Also, at this time, when you're doing the repotting, it's always good to sort out roots that are all sort of over the place and not radial. So repotting time is a very good time to sort out ugly roots or untidy roots. a case where it might be worth jetting some of the soil off with a hose pipe to see if I can expose more root. Some people in fact do that, as I say in Japan they're very fond of doing that with Satsuki azaleas, but I always feel it's a bit too drastic to wash every grain of soil off. This is how I keep progressing and then I will just show you before I put it in a final pot because I need to raise it and expose more root. Okay, so sorry about all these different half finished jobs because I have so much to get on with. I want to show you everything that I've got here. Now this is actually I dragged in from the field. Believe you me, we don't just have 10 or 20, we have hundreds, easily 500 to 1,000 of these trees that have been grown over a period of 36 years since I've been at Paris. So they are my long-term projects and they're all coming up to fruition. But as I mentioned at the start of this video, I have this habit of leaving it and leaving it, hoping that they will either get thicker in the trunk or become more interesting and then I never get to see the end product. Now this I think is another example of an air layering because it hasn't got thick roots and it's got lots of fine roots around the trunk. So I'm pretty sure this is one of my air layerings and it is probably an air layering from a Benici Dori. I can usually tell because air layerings have these fine roots growing from all around the trunk. And there is no sign of a thick taproot either. Okay, so we'll look at the telltale signs. If it is an air laying, we will be able to find the end where we air laid it and where we cut it off. I can tell straight away that this is air laying because I can't find any taproot. All fine roots. These are the advantages of growing by air laying. Air layering has so many advantages, people don't realize how good it is to produce from air layering. You see, look at the roots, there's no sign of any tap root whatsoever. Can't find the end of it. <laughs> Better we can find the moss ball as well if we prod around. But you see, planting in a flower pot has encouraged all these surface roots to come to the top, which doesn't help the radial root structure. You know, we want good radial roots. So it is just as well we've taken it out from there to deal with it. So look at the sphagnum moss here. This is the sphagnum moss, so this is clearly an air layering. Can you see the sphagnum there? Sphagnum moss, see? This is the sphagnum moss, this is the air layering from which the tree was taken. There you go. So that is clearly an air layering. Let's get a bit deeper. 
I think this is uh, the shoujo. The shoujo is earlier very easily. This and Benichi Dori are two very good species or varieties that take to airing well. So I'm trying to create nice radial roots. There are such a lot of roots that I don't have to worry about taking too much of because there is a lot. See how compact that lovely root ball is. Absolutely compact. But the roots are going all over the place. I want them flat and radial, not sprouting up. This is certainly what we've established, that this is an air layering. I don't want the roots to be popping up. The roots are so vigorous. Because I want that to be the leader, I'm going to chop the tree over here. Do you see how we've made the new leader? We cut it there, and then the new shoot is growing there. And we cut it here again. I don't know whether this is strong enough. Ah! That is your future tree. Can you see how it has been made? And if it was an air layering, this is no more than three years old. So how can you describe this tree as three years old? It's three years from air layering. But the stem is probably older than that. And I can still go deep into there and still not come across where I severed the trunk off from. So I can get it in a fairly shallow pot should I want to. The trouble with air layering is that one becomes so greedy that you're always wanting to keep air layering and air layering and you don't know when to stop, you know. There are some trees I've taken about seven plants from the top and as the new leader grows, I take a layer air layering of the leader. So it never ends. But you have to call it a day at some point and I'm going to do in this video another very interesting project where I have to really bite the bullet. I always talk of biting the bullet but very often I hesitate because I'm too greedy and always wanting to propagate more and more. But there comes a time when I need to stop because I want to see the finished product in my lifetime. So there you are, the nice shallow root ball. That's going to be potted up. That's going to make a lovely bonsai from air layering. Look at that. Okay, now we'll tackle a very interesting tree. Today the sun is shining, but just a minute ago, if you look at the black clouds, we had hailstones and torrential rain. So towards the end of March, you get this strange weather in England, which you just can't predict, but it's quite nice. It's getting nice and warm. So I'm going to complete the rest of the maple project that I was starting. The maples which are growing out in the open are not yet in leaf, so I can still work on them. So let's carry on doing these maple projects. As I said, many of these projects were earmarked for air layering, but I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to continue air layering ad infinitum because I will never see the end of uh, this thing. So this one, this was one because the superstructure is so nice. I decided I will air layer that, but ideally the tree should be cut down to there. Now this is another one that we looked at. So the choice on this one, as you can see, I can make the leader there so that it's not too tall. But even like this, it's quite interesting. So maybe that would make a very interesting tree like that. So probably I will take the other option. That means cut that off 
and we will wind this back on this side and we have the start of a nice bonsai growing this way. So that's that one. So we will rush, rush through all of these and see what we can make of them. So I have so many maples. I'm going to work like lightning and get through all of them. So if we come close, this one already, you can see the progression of this tree. Again, this tree has been distressed in the front. I know that deciduous trees, we don't usually use shari and things, but it looks very nice. And we cut off another branch there and the new leader is growing there. So you can see how this tree is progressing. Nice twists and turns. So I don't want any more. I cut it there and I cut it back there. And hopefully now it will produce more buds. And this will be the start of a lovely new bonsai. Some of these ugly roots we can cut off. Not everyone likes surface roots. And this we'll put in a bonsai training pot. So that one is out of the way. That's number three. Now this is another one that has been growing. You can see how they're growing in just ordinary compost. Nothing special, no acadam or anything. This is a lovely front, already lovely branching there. I don't want to keep letting it grow tall, but by cutting this, I'm going to force new growth to grow there. I will probably keep this as the new leader, but this is going to spoil the tape. I'll cut that off. So this is how this one is going to grow. But this I'll put back in its flower pot. I'm not going to put it in a bonsai training pot at all. Okay, let's look at another one. This one is another lovely one with beautiful nebari coming along. And I know it's a bit tall, but you can see that already the taper is forming very nicely here. So I've just got to be patient and let more side shoots grow to form a triangular shape like this. So this is the progress that I want this tree to make in the coming years. So each year, as you can see, we assess all these trees to see what needs doing and what needs uh, not doing. So this is air layering because the lovely radial roots come from air layering and this I know is a Benichidori and you can see the new leaders trying to grow from here. I try not to have too many shoots growing as the leader because it may form what we call an inverse taper. So I will take that off. Thicker shoots also I will take off and encourage new young shoots to grow. So this is the progress of this tree. So another few more years to wait on that one. Now, how about this one? Let's look at all. This is a mountain maple. So this one, you can see how it, you see, I've got a choice of two leaders here. I can make a leader here or I can make a leader here. One or the other. I think if I make a leader shorter, then I won't get such a tall tree. So, as I say, I will bite the bullet and with the lopper, I will chop that off. And let the new leader go from there. You notice what I do when I cut it, I never go close to the new leader. Many of you would be tempted to cut it there, but if you cut it there, it may die further back. But if I cut it here, about three eighths of an inch, if there's any die back, it'll die to this point. So that's a good thing to remember. Don't cut it too close. So that's a useful tip I can pass on to you. And try not to have too many shoots going there, because if you have too many shoots going there, you can get inverse taper. So that is that one. I don't often use dissectums for making a bonsai, but this is a dissectum maple. And I think I will cut that there and let the tree grow that way. So that is that one done. So that's done for another year. So all these trees, if you can see how we make the taper, tedious job, but you see I cut it there and cut it there to get taper and hope that the new leader will grow from there. So with this one, all I do now is to take the tips out to encourage more budding and hopefully you get more buds there and that will be the future of that tree.
let's go through all of them. This is another tree. So you must be getting bored with me telling you the same old story. So this one, you can see what I've done here. I've cut it off there and it's died back very nicely there. I can go back further if I wish to clean it up with a branch cutter. And then you can see how the leader is growing. This is a new leader that has grown only last year. So you get a lovely taper. So if I want, I don't want to grow too tall, I cut it back there. So that is forming a taper for the new bonsai there. Let's look at this one. This is quite an old one. Again, I think this is an air layering. Look at the beautiful base. It's got a lovely lean to the tree. Going that way, I can wire the branches down. I don't want vertical branches going there, so I cut that off. And hopefully I get a new leader there and more branches there. So this is how this tree is going to be formed. You can see where I've cut it down, the, the wood just naturally rots to that point and it calluses over. And once it calluses over, you don't have to worry. There's no worry about the tree dying or anything. They callus quite well. So that is that one. So you can appreciate what a long process this is. I could be waiting years and years and years for the end result. Now with this tree, if I don't want to wait too long, Look at this tree. It's a bit too tall. If I want a tall bonsai, I can have a tall bonsai. But if I don't want a tall bonsai, and if I don't want to air layer anymore, I will cut it there. Okay, I won't cut it flush back. I'll cut it there. And this is your new leader coming. So this is going to be this short. So that's that one done. see I have hundreds of maples here hundreds that's the trouble you've got to wait so long to see the end result now this is like a twin trunk almost and you see how the roots keep coming out they're so vigorous that the roots are all over the place now this is a very nice front for a twin trunk this is also a possible front with this as a possible leader but again, you see, I don't want too many branches coming from the same point because it will create inverse taper. So I will reduce this so that it forces new shoots to grow further back in the tree. And that's what I hope the tree will do. I'll put it in a bigger pot to hasten the thick, thick, thickening of the trunk. So wherever I turn, you will see interesting trees, interesting things to do. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, now this one, if you look closely at the tree, there are so many options. Where I cut it initially, it's already started callousing. So you have a choice of making that the leader or this the leader. So many choices. Let's knock that dead bit off. Okay, so I can either make this the leader or this the leader. So which one shall we choose? It's nice to have options. It would be a sad day if you had no options. So I can either keep it like that or if I have bold enough I can go further down but I'll wait for it to send more shoots before I take it too low. So I'll keep it like this and hope that it will send out more shoots and then I will take more decisions as to whether to make the lead up here or to continue letting it grow there. There seems to be no end of material I've got here. This, by the way, is not a maple. 
It's an uh, English elm that we earlier. Yeah, top of another earlier. So this is another classic tree. And you see how the new leader is growing on this one? Look at the nebari on this. Look at the beautiful nebari. So this, whenever I see nice nebari, I know that this is an air layering of another tree. So this is obviously a nice new um, leader growing. I can keep it all should I want to. It could still make a very nice tree like this. Shall I keep it all? I could keep it all. If not, I can cut it there and make a new leader, which will have a better taper. So, bite the bullet. You notice I'm not cutting flush. I'm always leaving about quarter inch so that it'll die down to that point. There you go. So that is how we make the tape on that tree. Okay, we've got so many trees that we have to work on. Now this one doesn't need much doing. It's already coming along quite nicely. You can see how I cut it there. A new taper grew and I cut it there. New taper grew, I cut it there, so new taper grew. So this is already well on its way. Now let's look at this one. So many interesting trees. Now this one, you can see where I cut it and it's died back to that point. As I say, if you cut it high, it'll die back further. So I can make it a short tree like that. Or I can continue letting it grow. I don't know, I might cut it there. I've got the choice of two leaders there. This difficult decision. I let all three go this year to see which is the strongest and then I cut it off. But meanwhile, I can even sew it off over there and not let this grow. So there's many options. Again, I'm afraid to take the decision straight away because there's so many options. Probably I'll leave it. So sometimes you just got to be a bit patient. Now this is another classic tree. Look at it, the base is quite nice, but do I want it to keep growing and growing? No, let's cut it down to there. Make new shoots. Another tree like this one. Look at this. It's got lovely twists and bends. So what do I do? I can either use that or use this. Maples are not often used for literati, but you see it's got a literati character to this tree. So that is the zigzag bend on this tree and hopefully it'll produce new twigs and branches. Same with this one. I don't want to keep letting it go on and on and on. You see how it dies back. You see I cut it there and it dies back to that point. So you can see the reason for cutting it higher than the junction that I wanted to grow from. So that is the start of another tree like that. Now this is another one which is quite chunky and low. And you can see how the new leader is growing on this one. Look at it. You see where I cut it back? I must have cut this about two, three years ago. This is the start of another chunky thick maple. I cut it there. And that's going to be a nice chunky thick tree. So where do I stop? It goes on and on. Now this is an interesting one. Look at the base on this tree. I could easily earlier there, but I don't think I will. I'm going to chop it down. Let me bring my electric saw home in on this and I will
I have to lift it. Okay, so with this one, I don't want to let it go on and on and on, so I'm going to cut it somewhere there. I won't go back to this point in case it dies back there, so I'll cut it there. And this one is a bit too tight. But I think this branch is a bit too thick. I will never be able to use that thick one there. So that comes off. In fact, I can cut it there, but it might become like a twin trunk tree. So that's the decision on that one. Now this one is so interesting here. This is a leaning tree. It's not often you get a leaning tree, but I think it's going to look quite nice. A leaning maple. Lovely. Quite nice, isn't it? Going that way. See, that will naturally rot, so that will be put in a training pot and let's see what happens to that one. So nothing to do with that one. So that will become a nice tree in its own right. Okay, let's look at so many. Now that we are on a roll, let's look at this one here. This is another nice tree. Okay, let's have a look at this. And this tree, you can see, it's tried to produce another leader there, but it's too thick. I will keep all these young twigs over there and see what happens. So this thick one, is doing nothing, so let's get rid of that. Hey! Look at that little oak tree here. All these are seedlings for free. So this will be potted up. So this is the front of the tree, look at it. Like so. This will be there like that. Okay, so that's that one done. Now this is a rough bark or Arakawa maple. It's still alive up to there. Depends whether I want it that tall or not, but because it's an Arakawa, I will probably air layer it because they're very rare trees. So I will air layer it, it's still alive there, but this part is probably dead. No, this is alive. This is alive. It's all alive. Yeah. It's just that the rough bark makes it look brown. So this I will air layer because I don't want to do anything to that. It's too rare. Now this is quite interesting like a multi-trunk so this is a classic case of judicious pruning pruning in the right place okay how do i know what to prune So if you want a taller tree, you can make it taller. If you don't want it that tall, I think I can cut it down to about here. You see, there are so many options. That's what I'm trying to point out to you. Because you have these options, it's such fun. So that tree will be like a twin trunk almost. Like that. So that will be another tree. Now this is going to be an interesting one. Look at this one. Whoop. Okay, look at that. If I didn't stand next to it, you don't get an idea as to how big it is. Now, I would normally air layer that rather than waste it. But as I say, I can't be waiting forever and a day. So let's get rid of it. So this is out of place. If I wanted to make a shorter tree, I could do that because every tree has got different options. If I wanted to make a short tree, I can cut it off there. And you can have a tree like this, shorter tree, not so tall. So I don't know what to do. I was going to cut this and grow this tall because I've got a leader here. I don't know whether to air layer this or not. Yeah, that can hear up. Yeah, we get it, you get a nice twin trunk. So sometimes 
I think we will take the other decision. That means we will let this become the leader, cut this off so that it won't form inverse taper. Wherever you get a thick branch going, you'll get inverse taper. So I'm going to take this off and concentrate on this as the tree. Probably this will become the leader. So this will be the new tree over here, like that. And as Josh says, we are going to air lay this to get a nice twin trunk maple from this end. Okay, so I decided not to bite the bullet on that one. <laughs> uh, so wherever we go, look at this one. The start of a nice bonsai there. This is another very interesting tree. Look at that. Look at that. Multi trunk. Complicated roots. Not everyone's cup of tea, but interesting nevertheless. I will in fact take it indoors and pot it up and see what happens to this. So this is going to be an interesting tree. So this is a classic case. Again, you can see how the taper has grown where I cut it off. New taper is forming. And then if I don't want the tree that tall, the tree is going to be like that. Okay, so we've got our work cut out. Look at this scores of trees waiting to be done so this is how we produce all our own maples for those who think that i only import maples that is not the truth we produce all these maples ourselves look at that beautiful tree you see progressive cutting cutting and you see the superstructure they're all ready to pot up like these these are too tall Again, this is a classic case here. I cut it there, let it die back there, and you see the new leader growing. That's where the new leader is growing. I can make it go this way, and we'll put it in a training pot and see how we progress. While we're here, I will show you this. This is a case of air layering. This is a cork bark elm, or an English elm, and this was air layered and then put in a basket, and then the roots have gone into another flower pot. So this will be tidied up. So we got a lot of tidying up to do. So much for showing you the basic cut. We will now pot some of these up. And I hope you've learned something from this video about making bonsai maple. There you go.